We are humbled to have her here tonight. The reason why she agreed to come here tonight is she has the heart for women and she is a beautiful living testimony of what a woman can do and find her balance amidst all the noise that we have around us. I think for me, what is important as we guide the discussion tonight is we're sitting at a time where Africa and the globe is ready for the woman to take her place. And we need to draw from our own well here from her honor, the vice president. So I would just like to welcome you officially again, Your Thank Honor. You. It's Thank wonderful you. to have you here with us tonight. And jumping into some of the questions that you heard tonight, one of the key questions that I heard was, how do you manage to stay so calm and collected in a field that is predominantly male dominated? Before I can respond to that question, let me commend you for bringing this group here. Um, and you have created a platform where women can exchange values that they hold so dearly, where women can hold each other's hands and aspire for the sky. Coming back to the question, uh, I think every woman is a blessed human being because of the manner we can balance uh, all types of uh, 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 challenges, all types of uh, demands on our time, on our persons, some of you could not be here on time. Why? Because the baby was crying and you had to feed the baby. Some of you had been asked by your boss, can you finish this assignment before you go home? You had to do that. You had to go home, ensure that you have cooked for your family. Uh, so I think we are very good at juggling uh, assignments, responsibilities, and what have you. And that you cannot take away from a woman. Being a politician, being a grandmother, being a mother, being everything, <laughs> it's quite challenging, but uh, I think you, over time, you begin to enjoy it and to realize that perhaps I was made into a woman for this purpose. Simply because as a woman, you care. You care a lot for your family. You care for your community. You care for uh, the country. You are bound to fit yourself into this box. It's not easy, I must say. For young women who, who are not in relationships or not married, it may be easier. You still have a chance. You have a chance. Did you hear? <laughs> but those that are Mrs. So-and-so, Mrs. So-and-so, it may be a challenge. question that I will always ask Her Honor is, at Style with Rose is one of the things that I really believe, the mandate that has been put on my heart is that as we grow older, we have a responsibility 
to pass on a bit of what we know, our experiences, our struggles, our achievements onto the young and upcoming generation. So if you had to say a word of encouragement or inspiration to the 60 years younger women, what would that encouragement be your honor? What would you say and how would you pass on that rose to them? The thing is, as you climb, as you climb the ladder, don't climb alone. I know a ladder, if there are too many of you, you'll fall. But as you climb the ladder, hold on to other women. Hold on to other women because you share same experiences. You encourage each other as you go. Uh, and that way, you will be part and parcel of this big, empowering team that is with you. For the younger women, I know there's always competition. Even in adolescent, uh, uh, stage, you dress up to compete for the best guy in, in school. <laughs> um, you literally do not dress for yourself, to please yourself. You have to dress up for someone. And we go through these processes because we have been socialized to believe that as a woman, you have to belong to somebody. First of all, as a young woman, you belong to your parents, your father especially. Oh, my father will beat me if this, this happens. Oh, my mother and I will be beaten together. That's true. <laughs> That's true. Um, and then after that, in our time, not your time, now you are independent young ladies. You believe that you go to school, not for yourself, but for your father, then to get a good husband. Mm -hmm. And that is the end of the world as far as you are concerned. <laughs> You've arrived. You have arrived. <laughs> you are stifling uh, a very important human being, an empowered woman mm. who can do much more than where the, the society is limiting you. Another issue is that we do not tell our stories as women. Our stories are told by other people. And the society has already determined the destiny of a woman. You are unskilled, some of, most of the women, you don't understand the issues, you are not capable, you cannot manage uh, decisions that verge on national development. So once you have been put in that compartment, your thinking uh, will be influenced by such uh, decisions and such talk. <coughs> so, ladies, you have to be courageous to change the status quo, to change the compartment where you are placed. You don't have to compete with Ben. We are not talking about competition here. But you have to realize your worth.
uh, as women, we all aspire to be at the table as decision makers. But how do we get there? The biggest mistake that I notice sometimes is that you aspire to get there through patronage. That is the biggest mistake. Or you aspire to be there because you have to be a girlfriend of somebody. <laughs> that is the type of leadership that does not last. Because uh, sooner or later, it will be discovered that uh, that, is, <coughs> that is not really you. You are somebody else. You have been propelled to that position because of these factors. And then your credibility is eroded. So when you are proud of yourself, you would not think that you have to be used in order to rise to a certain level because you know that you can do it on your own. You have to have the courage. That is, fear is our biggest constraint and obstacle. Women fear to step, even one step going down there. I don't know what it is that we fear. All of us, even myself, I was fearful. Me in politics or me, if I stand on a platform, what shall I say? <laughs> um, but I think once you conquer fear, you will be empowered and you will have courage to do even certain things you never imagined you would do. So conquering fear is step number one. Having faith uh, in my own personal life, I believe in certain values, our Christian values, and I believe that there is a guiding hand somewhere there. So I have faith in certain decisions I make. So really and truly, it's nice to be a woman, let me tell you this. <laughs> Get pretty because we're women. Yeah, we have to be proud of ourselves. I think God made us in such a way that uh, uh, we, we, we are beautiful people, inside and outside. The real participation in politics was in the year 2000. When the women's movement, I was head of the NGOCC at the time. We met and decided that we talk about women in decision making. Someone has to make a step to go in there and see how it works out. Um, so a number of us were selected to stand in the elections of 2001. So that was my first time to be in real active, uh, electable politics. Before that, I was supporting my late husband, who was a big politician. Um, uh, the first attempt at coming to parliament, luckily I was elected. And interestingly, I got a lot of support from women. Women in the villages, they just came and came and I realized the power of women. I realized the necessity to mold this group, to move along with these women and they can be very loyal compared to some of our people I know, there's one kwacha and they are gone. <laughs> <laughs> so 
Um, so that was uh, uh, my entry in politics. In 2006, I went back to be re-elected, but I lost. It was painful, but in politics that happens. It was a process. Uh, I cried foul that my votes were stolen and, <laughs> <laughs> and all that. But after I lost, I went back to the constituents and told my people that, you know, this is my, my home. I'll be visiting you quite often. And I'm visiting you not to undermine my colleague who is already a member of parliament but to tell you that I still care for you. So when I went back in 2011, I got an overwhelming vote. Uh, then I came back to parliament, this time around because it was in the ruling party, I was made Minister of Chiefs. Now, this was a non-existent ministry. We were creating it for the first time. And uh, I went to the late Mr. Sata. Why did you do this to me? All these ministries, transport, education, you give me chief. <laughs> <laughs> so he said, well, I did it for a purpose. I wanted to test you whether you can start a ministry. And in any case, don't you come from the royal family? I said, yes, but that, that has nothing to do with running a ministry. So I was given that ministry, we made it. And uh, by the time I was transferred to gender, uh, I believe that we left a foundation for that ministry because we wanted to engage the chiefs so that they become part and parcel of the development of Zambia. Mm -hmm. As to the to participation in decision making, such as where I am today, I think I must First of all, thank His Excellency, Mr. Edika Chagwalungu, for recognizing all of us as women. Mm -hmm. Because when he appointed me, he said, I'm appointing you to be a vice president for Zambia, but don't forget the gender agenda. Here we are in this uh, room, some of you are aspiring entrepreneurs, but where do you get help? I know Stanbeck is here and the other banks, but can one of these young girls, young women, walk into a bank with confidence <laughs> to, 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 to apply for a loan and you get it within a month? Wonderful. <laughs> how many, how many of our women who are now aspiring to go into construction are benefiting from this 20%, this and that and the other? So these are the fights that we have to engage in to ensure that women benefit from these uh, uh, fantastic programs that government puts in place. But our voices are few in parliament. And I don't see a push from you people, including young women who would like to say, look, I want also to be part of the decision making. So I'm going to stand. Can your party adopt me? <laughs> Mary, you wanted to know the way she's answered your question. Are you ready? Yes, sir. They are ready, you're on. <laughs> Fantastic. 
Fantastic. So my honor has covered us quite nicely again. She has answered the question of taking us through a very moving journey of how she entered politics. And my take out from here, I don't know about you, have you heard that she's talked about how she's been a first three times? She was elected the first time and she went through. She's the first vice president and she was the first uh, woman that led the Ministry of Chiefs. And what I'm hearing her say is that sometimes life will put you in a position where you feel like you're disadvantaged or you're going to fail and then you think it's the end of the world. I mean, who would have thought one of the most powerful women in our countries in our country cried when she felt that she had failed. But she's saying to us as women, we have the ability to do that. It's okay to fail, but it's most important to get up again because look at her now. And I really believe that she really deserves our appreciation for just, you know. get the courage yeah <laughs> hey, look at that big hand yes where does she get the courage i think at the beginning of my remarks i said as women the world is defined for us and to get out of that enclosure you have to be remarkable and uh, because that enclosure defines us as women. You are not this, you are not that, you are not that. You can be seen, but you should not be heard. Because those that should be heard are only a certain category of our, of our community, the men. Because if you are head, it means, oh, you are a cantagras woman, you are this, you are that, and the other. Uh, so that is a limitation. But this is what we should address, minimizing the limitations, so that we break out and be ourselves. And in that breakout, let's have our colleagues with us. Don't break out alone. Mm -hmm. So it's very important for, uh, for women, even in politics, to, to, to hold on to the solidarity. Um, I have a minister of gender here with me who have come to give us uh, support. We have the permanent secretary in my office, who I know is a legal person, but also a gender activist. So it's very important that as we move, let's move together. Let's empower each other. And just to support her honor on what she has just spoken about, one of the most moving things, you see, when we said the theme of this event was what? Platinum. We said it was platinum. And do we remember what platinum stands for? Platinum talks about strength. It's endurance. Those of you who wear rings, you know that platinum will not shake. The whole evening, her owner has been talking about being strong, being courageous, being unshakable, and that's what we are. Ministry is ready to work with all of you. At times it's because of lack of knowledge that uh, you are working in isolation. I am your minister, your servant. I remember we were in Ethiopia when the Secretary to Cabinet was given another job and he, there was that vacancy then jokingly i went to the president and said mr president why don't you po appoint a woman now as secretary to cabinet then the president just said give me a woman mm -hmm. and that gave me an idea i don't know whether you saw an advert 
as a ministry, we are collecting your qualifications, professional qualifications, so that we should have a directory. Anytime there, is, uh, there are some vacancies, I should just say, here is a directory, your excellence, pick any of the women. So if you haven't submitted yet, this is the time that you have to come to gender and submit your CV. Yes. So that the president should have no excuses. <laughs> you are here, intelligent, overqualified, yes. but uh, yes. the president doesn't know about you. So it's time we network, it's time you should do, come out of the cocoons and be counted. Not only that, I've seen powerful designers and I was telling myself, I thank God I never treated my hair. I can see how beautiful she's looking in her natural hair. But after it has been, you know, styled, it, it is looking so, so unique. So, but maybe it's lack of knowledge that we are even looking for you when you are looking for us. We don't know where to go. But if we can have expos for, you know, every talented woman, mm -hmm. you exhibit what you know under my ministry. You know, such things can be proposed. Yes. Then we prepare a platform under my ministry we even think of what did we export outside there. We prepare for a place for you to take what. So when we work together, Zambia will change. And as a politician, I'm looking for women who say, me, I'll go for it. Because we need the 50-50 you know, representation in decision making. And if you be just there supporting men, they, they enjoy when we dance for them. <laughs> Me, I just said, no, it's either we dance together or I don't dance. <laughs> so this is why I'm encouraging everyone to think of bringing yourselves. You bankers, we have bankers. We have Margaret, we have, we have Margaret Manakatwe, we have Maria Ranga, we have a lot of bankers in there. Yes. You know, come on board. You know, if you cannot be on the table, you become a menu. Yes. So it's time, oh, wow. it's time you should count yourself. Yes. You should be part and parcel. Yes. Elizabeth Peary just had to come out of fear and he put herself there. And here I am, today I'm a minister of gender. Yes. If I decided to sit and clap for others, I would have been clapping until Jesus came. Yes. So this is not my time. I believe this team, whoever is organizing, will come to the ministry and we sit together and see how we can broaden this from Lusaka to other provinces yes. and come together as women yes. and fight our battles yes. together. United we stand, divided we fall. Thank you very much. And you see, Team VP, now let me try and be cool you're on. Team VP is very, very enlightened with ladies. So the other one on the team is the permanent secretary in the vice president's office. And you see, ladies, we're sitting here, her honor, our minister of gender here, and even the peers, they have backgrounds like us. Yes. Started from corporates, they started their own businesses. Now they are running decisions in the offices and they need us. Madam Pierce, yeah. how can you encourage us yeah. to step up? Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> I'm really sorry, this is not my show, but <laughs> uh, I thank you very much for this opportunity. I would like to thank uh, her honor, particularly it wasn't easy getting her here, but we managed to get her here. And I think she's really enjoyed this uh, opportunity because she loves to empower women. And 
my minister here is well excited to be here as well. So a very good support team. For myself, like has been spoken, yes, I've been part of the corporate world and I did take up the challenge because as you know, as lawyers, we make more money in the outside world than in the inside. But I did give that up and joined the government and I haven't turned back. It's not an easy journey, but very enjoyable. And you learn a lot, you grow, and uh, you're able now to learn from the, um, those who have been in the system long enough. I've been through um, Ministry of Lands, and now I'm actually dealing with parliamentary business. So with the fact that I'm working in the office of the vice president, I help with parliamentary business. So it's as good as being part of the legislature as well. So sooner than later, for me, it's easy to become a politician because I'm working with them already. So it's very encouraging. And I really, really want to encourage everybody likes to sit in round corners, dark corners and condemn us. But somebody has to do the job. Does anybody not blame government for everything? Who is going to take up the mantle? They're always laughing at cadres. They don't understand anything. You who understand, come round the table. And that's all we need. I thank you very much. Ooh. So you see, ladies, not at Boma Yanganepu. Boma Sioneka Boma Taibueres. She's right here, accessible. She is like us. She is within us. She is amongst us. And we are just so blessed that we had this moment this evening with you, Your Honor. You have equipped us with wisdom in life, how to make good decisions, how to not fear and also look at things negatively. When bad things happen, we must always look at the good that is in there. I don't wish to take up much of her time. We will have to excuse her because you see now she has to take care of the, that's why we sleep at night. We've got our mother looking after us, making big decisions for us on top there, but we do have to let her go. But before we do, your closing remarks, Your Honor. I must say this was a very delightful evening which I will cherish for a long time to come. And I hope there will be many of these be uh, evenings. I just want to encourage you to forge ahead. Whatever you are doing or whatever you have started, you can go beyond. And it is possible for you where you find some stumbling blocks, consult others. Because that way, a door will open, a window will open in miraculous ways that you never expected. So I urge you to keep the solidarity, to support one another as you move on. And we look forward to some of you entering the world of politics. We look forward to some of you being international entrepreneurs. We look forward to some of you being a part, rather one of the uh, largest employers in the country. So please, let's work together. You heard the minister saying, there are possibilities of uh, collaboration at different levels, including at the ministries, because you are not aware of government programs that empower women at various uh, levels from marketeers to the international players. So let's exchange information so that uh, uh, you know what your government is doing and what your government tries to do for women in particular. And we are very lucky to have a president who is so gender sensitive that he would like to see more women involved in matters of national interest. So for this evening, I thank you for inviting me. Uh, 
and for this uh, wonderful interaction. Thank you. You can flourish if you do try. Buy some light, I'm seeing you in your new shine. Shine like gold. Bloom like a rose. It's a long way from the ground up. But you keep it moving, keep it nonstop.